Hey, welcome everyone. Happy New Year. And again, a reminder to uh, please mute yourselves and turn off your video. Um, my name is Jane Lamison, and I'm a Master Gardener with Napa County. And we want to thank you for joining us for our January Library Talk. And we bring you these library talks the first Thursday of every month. Um, and this is in partnership with uh, Napa County Library. And tonight our talk is going to be a little different than um, some of our talks in the past. And that's because we, you know, we usually talk about something, spe a specific plant or maybe uh, soil health, soil science, uh, lawn alternatives, all various things, you know, pollinator gardens, those types of things. But tonight we're going to do something a little different. We're going to introduce you to our Las Flores Learning Garden, which is an educational opportunity in and of itself. Um, and this is where you can go and see and touch and be part of some of the things that we talk about in some of our library talks and workshops. Um, and so I'll be turning that over to Reiner uh, Honicki, our speaker tonight, but just a minute, we're gonna turn it over to uh, Stephania Kramick, our partner at the Napa County Library. Um, good evening and, and happy new year. Um, I'm here tonight to recommend a couple of books for you. Um, water con conservation, uh, as you know, is important for Napa and for the Las Flores Learning Garden. And it should be for us too, uh, as gardeners. So it led me to pick up The Water Saving Garden by Pam Pennick. Pennick reminds us to stop thinking of water as a disposable commodity in the landscape and to conserve it as the precious resource it is, which means we may have to shift our thoughts on what a garden can be. This accessible xeriscaping guide is full of information on native and drought tolerant plants, including succulents. It includes a brief introduction into rainwater and gray water systems, a clear, easy to read book with practical advice it will help you plan your hardscapes and create your xeriscape garden. Desirable elements of many gardens are birds and butterflies. Barbara Ellis, her uh, uh, attracting uh, birds and butterflies showcases the many plants that can attract pollinators in the garden. This book has profiles of 30 common backyard birds and about 40 common North American butterflies. The profiles include the types of food the backyard visitor enjoys, as well as the types of covers they need to feel safe in your yard. There are tips for success for encouraging birds and butterflies to be a part of your garden life. If you want butterflies, then provide sunning spots, water, and appropriate plants and flowers. If you want birds, provide cover, water, and the plants and flowers for the species you want to attract. There are pictures and descriptions of the possibilities for your garden. Both books will bring you many hours of enjoyable reading and learning. They are available to you at your Napa County Library branches. So come on in and, and check them out. Back to you. Thank you, Stephania. And we just have a few more housekeeping things to, to talk about before we begin. Um, our mission, uh, we, we bring this to you every month, but uh, just as a reminder, our mission is we're volunteers and we're non-paid educators basically sharing UC-based um, research on home horticulture. Um, basically, our goal is public education of the community. Next slide, please. And um, our survey, uh, participants who attend our workshops and our library talks will receive a survey from the UC. And that survey is um, to help us get better and to also to, de to determine, are you utilizing the information that we're sharing with, with you? Have you changed your gardening practices? We hope that you will respond to the survey um, because it does help us. But if for some reason you do not want to receive the survey, please put your name in the chat box now and we will remove it, for, remove your name from the, the survey list. 
And speaking of chat box, I just want to remind you that um, please use the chat box to make your comments regarding our talk and or questions. And we'd also like you to stick around for afterwards because it would be nice to hear from you if you've been to the Learning Garden, the Las Flores Learning Garden, what your experience has, was at the Learning Garden and anything you wanna share with us about our Las Flores Learning Garden. So before I begin, I just wanna remind everyone again to please mute yourselves and to turn off your um, video. And I'm gonna turn it over to Reiner now. Thank you, Reiner. Thank you, Jane. Uh, for the introduction and uh, happy new year from me too to all all attendees. I'm really uh, just uh, excited to have so many people that signed up and are uh, participating. So uh, some of you have not been to the Las Flores Learning Garden and uh, may wonder why why we worked out this relationship with the city of Napa uh, Parks and Recreation Department to establish uh, a learning garden at Las Flores. And really what our, the, the overarching purposes were, uh, were was to, to help you design your own yard in, in a way that uh, uh, has your own stamp on it, but where you can actually apply some of the tips and, and information that the Master Gardeners of Napa County have available at the garden and at the workshops that we hold every fourth Saturday uh, of every month. And as, uh, the, uh, also uh, incorporate the, the information that's on the website. Uh, so we want to make sure you, you have the tools in hand to design your own backyard or front yard, help you respond to climate change and put carbon into the soil instead of the air and help wildlife and restore biodiversity. Next slide, please. So the the uh, master the master gardeners and and especially the Las Flores team uh, developed some goals and I'll, I'll I won't uh, bore you with reading all of them, but uh, I just want to highlight three uh, that that are important. We we wanted to increase the visibility and the accessibility to the UC Master Gardeners program of Napa County. And uh, just as a little um, anecdote, uh, as we um, worked on developing and planting the gardens, and whenever there is a, a group out there to do some weeding or trimming or just basically care, taking care of the plants, we often uh, talk to passersby and they really uh, uh, are getting a lot more um, exposure to what we do just by chatting with us. So that's very helpful to have uh, master gardeners out there. So we're more visible and we're also a lot more accessible so people don't have to go online and find out where our offices are. And uh, this way it helps just ad hoc to chat with people. And we want to educate and provide a model for community members on environmentally sound and sustainable horticultural practices and provide hands-on training opportunities. So we developed a fairly extensive goals list and uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> And uh, to begin with, I, I figured it would be good to show you a, a, a remote image, uh, a drone image, I assume it is, uh, to give you a sense of what Las Flores Park looks like and where it's located. It's uh, it's it's a fairly large park, uh, a large park, right behind Justin Siena uh, High School. And the we the western frontage is on Linda Vista Avenue, and uh, Linda Vista Avenue. And you can see uh, that uh, see on this uh, the picture the the subdivision that surrounds the park on Culpeper and on uh, Las Flores uh, Road. But you can also see the pickleball cor courts there, the green 
uh, dots, uh, squares with a red surrounding it, and the community center. And we really found this property very suitable because it's cent relatively centrally located with great amenities, including abundant parking and an on-site community center building where we can actually, that we can use and uh, have our workshops in when it uh, when it's raining or too cold to be outside. Next slide, please. please. Uh, we began this project uh, in collaboration with the Parks and Recreation Department back in the, the first discussions, I think, happened in 2018. And in 2019, uh, things started to take shape. This is what the frontage on the corner of Culpeper and Linda Vista looked like back uh, uh, right around the time when the COVID pandemic broke out. And the property had been languishing from the results of years of neglect and was very much in need of a little uh, TLC, as you can see here. The, 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 uh, the master gardener search team that, that searched for appropriate locations to develop a, a learning garden uh, thought this was a good fit uh, and, and, and called it Las Flores Learning Garden. Next slide, please. Here is uh, that same property today. And uh, this is probably a year and a half after we, we uh, put the plants in and it's grown in pretty well already, but uh, it, it looks a lot nicer than uh, just uh, four years ago. And so how did we arrive at this pretty satisfactory result? And I'm uh, primarily here to tell you that it's been an ongoing adventure and uh, tell you how what steps we had to go through it to make this work. Uh, next slide. Our primary focus is really sustainable landscaping in Napa County with climate change, water scarcity, and we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, the um, we could introduce uh, the public and and community the community to our native endemic and uh, as well as the invasive pests and diseases in mind, so that that uh, people could really use this as a as a uh, uh, a learning experience and apply it in their own backyards. We wanted to focus also on wildlife and pollinator friendly gardens. Uh, uh, eventually, we'd like to also focus on food gardening uh, and expanding the horticultural diversity of plants that are suitable to Napa's changing climate. To fulfill the goals and the focus areas, uh, we really wanted to make sure we 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 uh, started uh, at a smaller scale first and and identify what we must have and what we needed to include in our educational programs and in the in gardens and the gardens themselves going forward. So all of this sounded. Uh, kind of overwhelming at first, but we, um, because of course we wanted to make sure we had enough space to meet all of our goals. Here on this on this uh, slide, you can see in different colors, the areas, the different areas that we wanted to use for different purposes. We started out really with, uh, a low maintenance and 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 uh, water wise air garden demonstration here in the in the in the yellow uh, corner uh, corner plot right there on Culpeper and Linda Vista and then uh, the the pink area is uh, designated as our native plant garden the green strip along Linda Vista Avenue in the parking lot is dedicated to the to pollinator plants and wildlife friendly uh, plants and the purple square in the corner there with the driveway into the parking lot is that is our uh, 
demonstration area for succulents and uh, plants that don't need to be irrigated. The other areas are still sort of just in in the aspirational world, world at this point. And um, we hope to uh, kind of develop those two. One is designated as a uh, and as a school garden. The the turquoise square, the large turquoise square, is designated as a uh, wellness garden, med for meditation or uh, just relaxation. And the brown area is designated as a uh, uh, an instruction place where uh, we might in the future have some greenhouses or and raised beds and maybe a composting facility so that uh, we have we don't always have to drive to American Canyon to to get our compost that we small amounts of compost that uh, the our local gardeners might want to pick up. But anyway, that, that's still out in the future. But we um, we broke this up into manageable steps. And this allowed the entire endeavor to become less formidable and uh, would provide us with regular tangible successes. So we started with the low maintenance and water wise garden first because uh, as you probably still remember in 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 uh, 2019 we were still in a big drought uh, and probably you know it, it's unavoidable that future droughts will come again so we wanted to focus on that garden area first and then we would present that to the community that has uh, viewing and educational opportunities with the added benefit of the project being one step closer to our desired goals. Uh, if we wanted the communities to sit up and take notice of our new botanical teaching garden, we needed that first installed garden to really pop and be the flagship for the whole project. So that was the reason why we uh, focused on that uh, low maintenance and water wise garden first. Uh, next slide, please. This slide shows uh, the the design drawing for that corner on uh, Linda Vista Avenue and Culpeper. And using the ongoing water California water shortage situation, coupled with the public's frequent requests for beautiful landscapes without too much upkeep, we created that uh that garden uh and completed it in 2021 first we measured the area and drew up the garden layout and uh in the upper in the center center right you can see the uh the area where there is a, a viewing platform with a bench so that uh, people, even people with disabilities could actually uh, avail themselves to the information more easily. So they can uh, get, uh, use the sidewalk and then uh, uh, sit down on the bench and enjoy uh, the view over the whole garden. Displayed around these education viewing platforms is one or more example of each plant in the garden. And this was designed to give the public an up close view of each plant uh, that are generally just clustered around in within the, the whole area. Then as the viewer's eyes uh, moves up, up over the garden, the corresponding plants can be seen incorporated in the whole garden design. Next slide, please. So this is the before look after uh, we planted, but the area here is cleared of all existing foliage and debris. So that's how we started. And we decided in this case to save the four crepe myrtle uh, uh, trees that were already on the site and 
because we like their look and we wanted to have an example sh showing that when creating or redoing a garden area, it's possible to save some existing plants and incorporate that into the design. Into the design. Next slide, please. The next step was to put to install drip irrigation. And uh, the Parks and Recreation Department staff did that. They uh, installed a drip irrigation system consisting of uh, 5 8 inch drip lines with two gallons per hour emitters inserted every 18 inches. And of course, a timer that could be adjusted depending on uh, weather conditions and uh, heat waves or you know, in the winter time, it's turned off and it lives on uh, on rainwater. Next slide, please. Then, uh, following the irrigation in, uh, system installation, the entire area was then covered with four inches of fresh compost, and this is uh, the the material that you can also pick up or have delivered from the Napa, uh, the city's um, uh, recycling and uh, composting facility on Tower Road. And uh, they have plenty of it. So, uh, and it's, it's much cheaper than the stuff you get uh, at the nursery. Uh, next slide, please. And after the compost was uh, distributed, we plant, we uh, implemented the design and we planted the new plants. Next slide. And the next step was uh, to cover the planting area with three inch deep mini fir bark mulch to help ho hold in the moisture and prevent weeds. And the master gardeners do not recommend wheat cloth of any type. So usually a thick layer of uh, bark mulch is, uh, is sufficient to keep the weeds in check. And the first garden installation was a team effort, really. Actually, all, all garden installations are a team effort with the city of Napa and the master gardeners working together. Next slide. And the finishing touches were done in 2021 for this area. And uh, uh, the, the final step really was to uh, add a concrete education viewing platform and a bench. And those are uh, not only accessible to people with disabilities, but they encourage each viewer to pause and take time to view the garden. Using these platforms, each person can actually enter the garden to experience it to the fullest and the backless benches allow the observer a full 360 degree view. Next slide, please. And there are large 24 by 18, eight, eight, uh, 24 inches by 18 inches gel laminated bilingual permanent signs that are elaborating on a top on the topic relevant to the garden being viewed. Uh, and they are made with uh, sturdy metal frames and posts, but they can be updated with new information as needed. Uh, there are QR codes on these signs that uh, are also provided for quick direct access to the Las, Flor Las Flores Learning Garden web pages on the Napa Master Gardeners website. And you'll hear much more about the website later. Uh, by scanning the QR code, you can see the plants in real time and at the same time have access to all the plant information on each one while you're standing in that beautiful garden. We figured that that's, that would be a great way to learn. Uh, so take your electronic device with you and, uh, and uh, read along uh, all the information all the plant information for each one of the species or varieties is uh, listed specifically on the uh, Las Flores Learning Garden pages. Next slide, please. So this is this was um, summer of last year, 
uh, as you can see, the 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 tiny little one gallon plants that you saw earlier on this on the slide a couple of slides before, they have grown up pretty well and everything looks uh, marvelous. Next slide, please. And the next area that we then tackled was the California Native Plants Garden. This, again, here's a before picture. It's all uh, just uh, uh, Bermuda grass and, and bindweed and other uh, plants that we didn't desire to have to maintain there. And the next slide shows what it looks like today. The California Native Garden includes examples of over 33 California native plants that are perfect for our local climate zone. And when you go and click on the uh, Las Forest Learning Garden uh, tab on the website, and you choose to go to this particular garden, uh, or, or when you're out there, you can follow, uh, you can uh, use the QR code to land on that page, uh, you can actually get all the specific information of each plant that we have uh, that, that, that we have in that area uh, to find out what its preferences are, how much light it needs, the temperature requirements, and so on and so forth. So all the information you need if, if one of these plants uh, appeals to you is available so you can then evaluate if they would fit, if that plant would fit into your specific location in your yard as well. Next slide, please. And right next to the native garden area is the designated strip along Linda Vista Avenue, uh, and that's the pollinator garden. It's so far the largest one that we, uh, we that we modified and replanted. This is the strip before. And here it is uh, after we went through all the steps that uh, we went through in the uh, waterwise and low maintenance garden, the first one that we developed. So the pollinator garden is planted with examples of over 63 varieties of pollinator friendly plants that are chosen especially for our valley's Mediterranean climate. And this garden literally buzzes with activity. Uh, and the plant choices also were um, driven by how, how useful the plants are for birds too, not just hummingbirds, but also uh, uh, if we, uh, in, in the fall when the when the seed heads form it, for birds that come and and eat the seeds. So that's another purpose of this of the pollinator garden as well. Next slide please. Is that is the succulent dry or dry garden area that does not have any irrigation at all. And this is before we refurbished it. This is the undeveloped garden area and next slide shows what it looks like today. Uh, we really, uh, we worked well with the city on this one because obviously you don't want to have uh, cacti or succulents there that uh, might be uh, hazardous for little toddlers that might stumble in there. So we selected succulents that are not just visually appealing and completely drought tolerant and can live on you know, the average rainfall that we get here. But we also wanted to make sure that it was um, not a safety hazard and demonstrate that uh, succulent and uh, azeriscapes can be quite attractive. And so we made sure we put uh, appropriate uh, gravel in there and, uh, and, and uh, change the soil to make sure the drainage was well, uh, well taken care of, and that this wouldn't turn into a swamp. So, uh, it's worth taking a look at because the uh, uh, it definitely is is uh, 
in some cases, it's a, in some areas, it's, it's a challenge to make sure that the drainage is appropriate. And you can also learn that on, on the website and directly uh, observe it in, in the plot. Next slide, please. So uh, at each education event at the Las Flores Learning Garden, the master gardeners include information on two topics that we feel are very important in today's world, climate change and healthy soil management. So uh, a lot of our, many of our workshops focus on healthy soils, cover crops, composting, no-till, and uh, uh, things that, that we as gardeners can do to contribute to climate resilience and to adapt to uh, uh, our weird, weird climate these days. Next slide, please. So in, in essence, all of these garden areas give you a chance to uh, to be the change and and uh, uh, kind of promote and implement in your own spaces regenerative gardening practices. Our goal is to inform and educate the home gardener on these somewhat overwhelming current worldwide concerns and with provided information, we help to empower each person to make a difference one garden at a time. So no matter how small your plot is, uh, you, can, you can help adapt to climate change. Next slide, please. And I wanted to, to also briefly highlight some of these education and community outreach events at at the site at the park. Uh, so far, we've had uh, two public guided tours. Um, we've had held over 25 on site education events, uh, 19 public education events on multiple garden oriented topics, included, including soils, ergonomics in the garden, pollinators, and tool care, just to name a few. And one of the wonderful aspects of having our botanical teaching garden right there is that each education event can have a hands-on element in the garden segment. The attendees actually uh, get out in the garden and physically use uh, the event information uh, that, and, and that makes the entire experience uh, mu a much deeper learning and training uh, experience rather than just a, a lecture event. Our uh, UC Master Gardener social media team teams, they post regularly on Instagram and Facebook about what's going on at the Las Forest Learning Garden. The, uh, uh, the events are also listed in the monthly City of Napa Parks and Recreation newsletter uh, that you can access through, through their web page. And as I mentioned, we have a weekly blog called Spill the Beans that expounds on the education event topic information. Uh, that's also located on our website. Next slide, please. So here, uh, this slide shows uh, some selected pictures at the, at the grand opening that we had in 2022 and the 2023 fall fair. Uh, the These events, uh, attract more than 30 uh, horticultural topic uh, learning stations, which included uh, the UC Master Gardeners, as well as some of our local community partners, such as the California Native Plant Society, uh, uh, the Suskel Tribal Council, the City of Napa's Water Department, uh, uh, obviously the, uh, the recycling uh, uh, crew, uh, they they you can actually get free compost <laughs> at the at their booth booth. So uh, this is a fun event on on a Saturday. Uh, our next one is scheduled for September thirtieth. So uh, uh, please write that as a possibility into your calendar. It would be fun uh, for the whole family. We had over two hundred fifty members of the community attending each of these events with family and family and friends. It's it's fun. It's a fun event. Uh, next slide, please. 
uh the kids particularly like uh like uh the uh the little shop of horror character audrey uh it's an uh an animatronic plant that begs her visitors to feed feed her and she holds conversations with those that give her coins uh and and uh the, the kids in particular love to hang out right there at that station anyway it's just an example of how uh we try to in, engage young people too and um uh the master gardeners believe this is an, a pretty amazing botanical teaching garden and it's a wonderful asset to the community we take our stewardship of this of the Las Flores Learning Garden very seriously. Around five hours a week or 250 hours a year, we are there at the gardens, weeding, pruning, mulching, and generally taking care of the plants. One of our favorite things about being in the gardens is acting as docents. And over and over, members of the community will make a point of stopping by to tell us that the gardens look beautiful, ask about a plant, talk soils, and mulch and the list goes on it's it's uh really fun to hang out out there uh next slide please so i wanted to just highlight uh our community and uh events that are scheduled for this year uh each one of these events uh happen regularly on the fourth saturday of each month um the next one uh, in a couple of weeks is on fruit tree pruning. The one after that in February is on soil and biochar. Monarch, uh, monarch butterflies and pollinators are on the list as well. Uh, Waterwise and low maintenance gardens uh, are in April. Uh, we'll talk about lawn alternatives and have actually a new area uh, that that we've started working on already. By then we will have that ready where you can actually see some alternatives to lawns be, that are much uh, less water consumptive and and just as versatile and green as your Kentucky bluegrass. Anyway, it gives you a good uh, uh, spectrum of our educational uh, workshops and uh, these also, uh, they help because uh, as, as uh, most teachers are aware of, it's helpful to educate in multiple modes. Uh, so in addition to direct outdoor experiences in each garden, the master gardeners uh, also make sure that people uh, know how to access our terrific website, which lets you dive much deeper on many subjects that may be of interest to you. And Lonnie Clark will give you an overview of how to maneuver the website and to get to details you never knew you needed. Uh, next slide, please. And I wanna introduce uh, Lonnie Clark that uh, has been working with me for, you know, for, the for the last couple of weeks to get, um, get you introduced to the garden. Next slide, please. Okay, I got it. So, Super. Reiner, thank you so much, and kudos to everybody involved uh, for the wonderful work you've done developing Las Flores Learning Garden. And I, I think a, a lot of our attendees have been out there, but boy, if you haven't, it's a wonderful experience and a great way to educate yourself uh, about best gardening practices and get some ideas if you want to give your garden a facelift. But we're right in the middle of the rainy season and the weather's a little bit iffy. So I'm going to introduce you to our website and show you how you can get some information on Las Flores Learning Garden um, through the Master Gardener website. Our web address is prominently shown at the bottom of this slide. I'm not going to read it to you, but if you uh, if you if you don't write it down or if you don't already have it memorized, if you just Google UC Master Gardeners Napa, you'll get our web address. And when you pull up our website, this is what you're going to see. 
Um, this is our entry page and it will uh, cover um, a wide variety of topics, including garden questions and events. Uh, the page is available in English and in Spanish, which is useful. This is a close up a little bit farther down the page. Um, and you will see, I have, I have circled in black, the tile that you click on to, go, to enter the Las Flores Learning Garden area. And we are going to explore that in a minute, but, but before we do, I will also point out to you that, that below the Las Flores tile, you will also see a link to past programs and events. And there are recordings and references for virtually every program we have done uh, for the public um, for the last couple of years. So it, there is a wealth of information here and I encourage you to visit our website. If you do click on Las Flores Learning Garden, you're gonna pull up a page. This is the page you're gonna pull up. And you can see uh, there's a, a tiny little schematic map um, showing the area. And below that, there are there is a list of, of build, buildings and, and areas alluded to in the schematic drawing. And in the left-hand column, our the gardens that we have already developed um, are hyperlinked. So you can select one of those gardens and when you click on it, it'll open up, you'll see a list of all the plants in it. Um, so if you were out there and you saw something, but you weren't, you can't quite remember what it was. If you come onto the web page, hit, hit the link for the garden, you'll pull up a link, um, a list of all the plants that were there. Um, and Reiner also told you that we have a blog that comes out uh, called Spill the Beans. You can link to it right here. Again, there is a, a link to um, the past workshop, references and docs. I think those are probably particular specific to the ones that were, were presented at Las Flores, okay? When you do click on, if you select a plant, you wanna get more information, this is what opens up. Um, you will see this is the low water, low maintenance garden. And there are the, here are the first couple of, of um, plants that are featured in that garden, the crepe myrtle and emerald, uh, emerald carpet manzanita. If you, for instance, are considering um, putting in a street tree, for example, crepe myrtle is one of the street trees that the city of Napa um, approves up for its street tree program. And uh, if you want one, you can pull this up and find out all about the crepe myrtle, what, it, what colors um, its blooms are, uh, when it blooms, its needs in terms of water and light, uh, what it attracts, uh, what its bloom season is, and uh, just lots of information um, about a given plant. And it will really help you decide whether or not that is the right plant for you. So this website really is your partner um, to learn more not only about the Las Flores Learning Garden, but about um, gardening in general. And as you have heard several times in the course of this presentation, our very reason for existing is to help you be the best gardener you can be. So go visit, visit the garden and visit our website. And I think now with that, we are ready for questions, if we have any.
right now there's no questions in the chat box, but maybe there's some comments and if people who have visited Las Flores want to share their um, experiences there, that would be great. You can open your, your um, take yourself off mute and share, or you can put it in the chat box. Yeah, thanks Stefania for, um, for listing the, the title, the book titles, because uh, that's also a very helpful. Uh, I hope you have multiple copies of those. <laughs> you, might, uh, you might get uh, that, those two books might be in great demand. Well, I hope so. And people can place them on hold if they're, they're checked out. And we also have a system where we share with other libraries so we could borrow from other libraries. So, you know, it, it usually doesn't take very long to get a book that you've requested, unless it's one of the best sellers, then you might have to wait quite a bit. So Reiner, there was a question about the mulch. Uh, Kevin asked, where do you get the free mulch? Yes. So there, there um, those uh, small miniature fir bark um, uh, mulch um, pieces, they actually do cost something, but you can contact uh, a lot of arborists and uh, tree companies in Napa, and they would be happy to uh, dump a truckload of wood chips into your driveway. Uh, just make sure that it's not eucalyptus or, uh, you know, uh, or a privet or some, you know, some wood chips are not all that uh, great for your soil. But usually arborists are very happy to give you free uh, chips. And the compost you can get... Uh, down in at Tower Road, at the end of Tower Road, where the the city of Napa's composting facility is, uh, the smallest amount you can get there is um, half a cubic yard, and that costs about seven dollars, which is uh, very reasonable in my view. But that's the compost. Um, you can also get compost from the city of Saint Helena but you have to get a minimum of 10 cubic yards. And that's probably, you, you probably have to share that with your whole neighborhood <laughs> because that's a lot of uh, compost. Don't see any other questions at this time. Okay, if there's no more comments, thank you everybody for attending. And um, <clears throat> next month, um, we'll be hearing from our field test team, the um, Master Gardeners of Napa County will be um, sharing what they learned, what our field test team learned about growing lettuce year round in Napa, the varietals and um, the things that they recommend tips and tricks. So please join us next week, uh, month, um, February, the first Thursday of the month, and it'll be our field test team talking about lettuce.